Adventure. Adventure, intrigue, mystery, romance, starring Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall. Together in the sultry setting of tropical Havana and the mysterious islands of the Caribbean. Bold Venture. Magic names of Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall bring you Bold Venture and a tale of mystery and intrigue. Feels good, huh, sailor? The morning sun in your face, the Caribbean wind in your hair. How else would it be? That's what I said, good. How does it look on me? Well, let me consider it. Yeah. You at the wheel of our boat, the sun on your lips, the square patch on your dungarees. We finished this fishing trip, sailor. You go buy a midi blouse with an extra pair of pants. Gee, Willikers, Daddy. You make me feel like a girl who was born with a silver ladle in her mouth. Come closer, kid, and I'll lipstick a thank you on your brow. If you want to show gratitude, go aft and thank Mr. Jeffrey. He's paying for the trip. I tried. I went aft. Gentle and furry as a kitten. I said, thank you for hiring us, Mr. Jeffrey. Thank you for the payment we will receive when we set you ashore with your load of fish. Thank you, I said. And what did he say? He grunted. <laughs> so I flounced off. So I left him to his rod and reel. Well, so long as he pays us, you won't let a grunt stand between him and you, huh, sailor? Jeffrey came to me, hired the boat for a fishing trip for him and a friend. But the friend never showed up. That cuts our profits in half. So he'll buy only one pair of pants. Let me finish, huh? So he hires our boat. If he wants to sit there and fish in lonesome splendor, not talk to anyone, grunt. That's his right. That's... Hey, he's got a strike. Listen to that line sing. Hey, Jeffrey, you got a big one, a beauty. Look at that sport go. Now, let him run a little more. Now, now reel in. Reel in. What's the matter, kid? Don't freeze up now. I said reel in. Ah, you lost him. You had a picture fish and you lost him. Jeffrey. Hey, Jeffrey, what's the matter with you? What? I heard the line snap, Slate. What's with this, Jeffrey? An amateur? How does he let a beauty like that get away from him? I'll tell you how, sailor. He died. He's dead. That's how. I wish you'd say something, Rico. Pensive, in thoughts. I am thinking about it. Oh, stop here for a minute. Of course, of course, as you wish it. Amy. Shh. That diamond's winking at me. The blue one. It's about three carats. I'll want that one, Rico. In my wedding ring. From you to me. Because I love you. And you can afford it. You could buy me a sack full out of the small change you carry. Amy. Mm-hmm. Amy, you are sure? About Senor Jeffrey, I mean. The Senor from Iowa. Oh. It is no longer between you and Senor Jeffrey what it used to be. That's what's bothering you, huh? See. Si. Rico, listen to me. Matt Jeffrey showed up in Havana a couple of days ago. Oh, I'll admit it. There was a flutter when he called. I met him this morning for breakfast and to go fishing. When I saw him, I laughed to myself because I was happy. Happy? Because I knew he didn't mean anything to me. Just you, Rico. That's why I left Matt Jeffrey before we went in the restaurant. And that's why I came running to you without even changing. Mm. Buy me a wedding ring, Rico. Congratulate me, Senor Shannon, Senorita Duval. You did something, LaSalle? A beautiful thing. A clever thing. I have apprehended the murderers of Matt Jeffrey. He was murdered? Well, the man died quietly on our boat. There was no one around. Him. Only was... you ain't, Senor Shannon. And inside the dead man, enough poison to have killed him three times over. Matt Jeffrey was murdered. If you say so. And you've got his murderers. 
I'm glad for you and for Jeffrey. Who are they? You and you. Please, sign your confessions. We will shake hands and we will still be friends. Here, sign. All written out for us, huh, LaSalle? Hmm. Well, read me the small print where it says why we killed him. I left the spaces blank for you to fill in. Because I also could not puzzle why you want dead a man who is so poor he must live in Havana in a mouse hole like the Las Flores Hotel. A man who digs into his savings to hire your boat for fish. A man who... How much dough you got on you, sailor? Three bucks and a dime. Why? Well, let's see. I've got, uh... Yeah. About forty-two dollars. That makes forty-five and a dime for a candy bar. Enough for bail, LaSalle? For 45 pesos, you expect that I... Well, here's another buck. I was holding it out for cab fare. Come on, sailor. Let's go fill in the blank spaces on why we killed a man. Here's 20 centavos back, senor. Take a streetcar. A streetcar named we desire you to come back to the pokey. Come back. Or we bring you back on a Tommy gun rickshaw. <laughs> Why don't you pay attention to us? It is so seldom, senor, that a man brings his blushing bride to this hotel for a honeymoon that I am beside myself with frenzy and delight. And now I can do for you what? Didn't you have a guest here named Matt Jeffrey? Uh... <laughs> this desk bell would just about fit in the middle of that yawn, Chico. All right, you ask for Put it. Put the bell down, Slate. Chico. Chico, look at me. You know something, Chico? You're the cutest little old Chico I've seen uh, all day. Observe, senorita, when I yawn. Gold teeth flash. Twenty-three gold teeth in my mouth. I have a friend who has twenty-five gold teeth. They are expensive. How much? Ten pesos. Current fee for the bicuspid of gold. You'll get it. What about Matt Jeffrey? This morning he walked out into the Havana daylight. Before he left for the daylight, he made two calls through the telephone in his room, through the switchboard at my left, out into the world of hustle and bustle. Ten pesos, senor, for the numbers he called, and so that I may eat with gold. Yeah, here. And here to you. I give you thanks. Here's two nickels, sailor. Use that payphone on the wall. Call these numbers. Right. Norton's Art Shop. Norton speaking. Who? Norton. Ray Norton. Oh, sorry. I got the wrong number. First one was Norton's Art Shop, Slate. Try the other one. Okay. Hello? Hello. This is Mary, the Sunshine Girl. Your phone number has been selected to receive a spiffy prize of one year's free service. May I have your name and address, please? Amy Webb, 1212 Paseo Royale. Free service for what? Got him, Slate. Let's go. Yes? I'm Slate Shannon. This is Sailor DeBow. And? There's a man named Matt Jeffrey on a fishing trip this morning. He died. He was poisoned. Come in. This is a cozy nook. What did this coffee table set you back, honey? Don't I know you? Maybe. I don't remember. What do you two characters want? Matt Jeffrey called you a couple of hours before he died. If it twists you inside, you can call me, too. What about Matt Jeffrey? Was a nice fellow. Had shoulders. Went good with tall corn. You got shoulders, too. Why don't you get rid of the drab girl, Slate? See? I'm biting my lip. I'm being very nice. I'm behaved. <laughs> well, the police are in on this, Amy. Maybe we can save you some grief. I'll go along with that. And that was a boy from Iowa I was engaged to once. We rubbed cheeks at college dances. He showed up in Havana. Called me a couple of nights ago. I saw him this morning. He called you this morning, too. To make final arrangements for the day. Breakfast, then a fishing trip. Dull, huh? Did you have breakfast with him? Mm-hmm. 
We were crossing an alley. A cat ran by and rubbed itself against his trousers. Matt kicked the cat in the face. You think I'd want to spend a day with a... Amy, I... Oh, oh, I did not know you had people. I don't have them. They're leaving. Who are you? Uh, Permit my introduction. I am Rico Sebastian. Beloved by her, and so engaged. Ah, you're a lucky man. You are lovely this evening, Amy. And in two weeks, you will be to me. No more flying airplane trips to Iowa to see your mother. No more meeting of fellow youth like my Jeffrey. Shh, no. darling. You're embarrassing the sunshine girl. Goodbye, you two. Get out. Wouldn't have it any other way. Come on, sailor. What now, Brain? Now, let's try another wrong number. Let's try Norton's art shop. And you've come all the way down to this nook of old Havana just because a man named Matt Jeffrey called me this morning? Uh Uh-huh. We had another reason, too. Jeffrey died on our boat this morning of murder. So you see, Mr. Norton, why we go around Havana looking in nooks and crannies. You never know what you'll come up with. And you came up with me, one of the artist folk. I want to tell you about me. I found my soul in Havana. Why, you'd be surprised the people that bring their photographs to me to paint a lifelike portrait from. What would Jeffrey wanted? His picture painted from a snapshot? Oh, not of him. Of his pussycat. That man's crazy about cats. He brought me a photograph of Tabby. I had a copy made to paint from, mailed him back his original. Crazy about cats, huh? We heard different slate. We heard he was a cat kicker. Well, we must have heard wrong, sailor. Mr. Norton here says Jeffrey was mad for cats. Mr. Norton wouldn't lie, would Mr. Norton? Indeed, I wouldn't. I'll just prove it to you. I'll go in the back room and bring out the portrait I did of Tabby, Mr. Jeffrey's cat. You just wait here. Hurry back, Mr. Norton. I just can't wait to hear more about your soul and the pussycat. Goody. Only be a minute. Norton, what happened? Uh, Slate. Maybe we can get help. For you. Maybe for me. Not for Norton. He can't wait that long. He's just been shot to death. Stars Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall, and the second act of our story. On a fishing trip, a man did go, cast his bait, and what do you know? When a fish nibbled and yanked on line, man took a deep breath for the very last time. This seems to be the custom of the day, and I will explain exactly what I say. Another fellow who was clever with paint met a pistol bullet, and now he ain't. And I'm just living for the second that LaSalle finds out we were the last ones to have talked to him. And LaSalle will find out, Miss Sailor. You want Slate to hear you. I heard him, Sailor. LaSalle won't play with us this time. This time we're in it good. If I can understand one thing, I wouldn't feel so bad. Pardon, about... Senor Shannon. Well, hello, Rico. Glad you're here. Sit down. On matters of urgency, I do not sit. My fiance, the Senorita Amy Webb, is in difficulty. Your name comes first to the lips of those in Havana who wish to skirt the police. Those who have difficulty and cannot discuss it to authorities, come to Senor Shannon. This I have heard, and I am willing to pay for the privilege. Now, let's skip the pay, Rico. For now. When Amy came back from a vacation to visit her mother in the Estados Unidos, in your estado of Iowa, she commenced to be blackmailed. Ah, that would fit. I don't know how exactly, but it would fit. And so, a phone call to her. Pay me $20,000 for some information, the man said, about one hour ago. Says to meet him with money at the Arribadero dock. Near the port agent's shack at 11. Listen to me, Rico. Tell her to do it. 
I'll be there. I'll be in the doorway of that port agent's shack. Tell Amy to walk past me. Keep walking back and forth past me. So if anyone approaches her, I'll know it. Yes, yes. And tell her not to talk to me. Above all, she's not to talk to me. No one must know I'm there. Got that? Si, senor. I have it exactly. See me, Alma, beloved. May I come in? So formal, Rico. The gentle tap, the polite request. We're going to be married, remember? Come in, sweet. I've been to Shannon. He has agreed to help you, to give you protection. For money? What does it matter? What matters is that he will hold you from harm. So I'm to go ahead and rub noses with the blackmailer in the dock, huh? You are not to speak to him. You are to make no outcry. You are only to walk, so Shannon will know you are there. He'll know, too. Blade will know I'm there. That's all? You didn't buy me anything? A little present? A little happy, happy? I did not think, Amy. I only... <laughs> How greedy I am, too. You gave me Shannon. What more could I want? <laughs> Late, you're there, aren't you? Keep walking, you fool. Don't talk to me. But I'm frightened. A hundred percent frightened, Slate. If he sees you talking to me, he'll kill. He's already killed twice. He's got the habit. Walk away. I'm frightened. No hysterics, kid. It's not the time. Beat it, Amy. Walk. Okay. Here goes a pretty girl. You're the guy I want to talk to, Buster. I'm coming after you, Buster. Slade. Slade, are you all right? Yeah. Yeah, I'm all right. Surprised, I guess. Oh, there's blood in your cheek. Yeah, well, bullets do that to my cheek, Amy, when they graze it. Why did you cry out? I told you not to. I'm a girl. Situations like this upset me. Yeah. He got away. Your blackmailer's a buddy of mine, Amy. He's got teeth that shine in the dark. So you didn't get Amy's blackmailer. That's why we're going back to that man in the flea bag, huh? Your vision of penance for a deed not done. And a guy out of yawn that enchanted me. You mind? Long ago, Slate, I learned not to mind. Only for you. After me, sailor. Hi, Chico. Guess who? Please, on delay, go away. Do not stand and gloat on me. Slate's eager to see you yawn again, Chico. Yawn for the man. Yeah, do that, Chico. Flash the gold. Ten paces if you open your mouth wide. You tarnish my gold by customers with my blood, senor. You left a double empty space in the choppers. What more do you want? I got two of your teeth, huh, Chico? Meet a blackmailer, sailor. I spoil it. I miss it. I lose it. Amateurs should not play this game. It is murder on teeth. Oh, you fouled up on the blackmail, but you got to kill two men. Matt Jeffrey by poison. Ray Norton by bullet. You've had a busy day, little old Chico. You are both very slap-happy people, no? Sure we are, Chico. I'm going to slap you right down to police headquarters. That way I'll beat a couple of murders off my shoulders. On your feet, golden oh, boy. take your hand from my tear-stained jacket and I will explain. Yeah, do that, Chico. With my hand on this stain, here. A letter came from my once room guest, Matt Jeffrey. After he is deceased, I open it. Picture him. Blackmail picture to man with brains. More brains than to me. So you called Amy Webb? Who else to call? She has had photographs in Havana papers because she will marry Havana millionaire. Who else to call? Where's the picture? In my bee shack on Vedaro Beach. The dirtiest one. The painted red and blue. The one on the shakiest stilts. Under a loose board in the floor. We check you with the police, Chico. Then we check a loose board. Coming, golden boy? He said under a loose board. 
Would have been easier if he'd sat under a tight board. What isn't loose in here? Lift them up, sailor, one by one, till we find the treasure. <laughs> We're having fun, huh? Mm-hmm. Well, what'd you say? Oh, I said it's a moonlight night and the sea is bright and I'm as jolly as can be. What'd you think I said? That sounded more like... Hey, I think I... Yeah, I found him, sailor. Blackmail stuff, huh? Let me peek. Huh. Amy in a junior swimsuit. Matt Jeffrey in pinup shorts. And both leaning against a brand new car. That's all? Take another look. Where are they? Hmm. To me, it looks like Miami. I've been to Miami. And to me, it looks like Miami. Kill me, it is Miami. Yeah. A cozy piece of blackmail. That's blackmail to be in my... Slate. Quit snapping your gun. That's a rifle, sailor. Someone's trying to kill us. Come on. It's through here, sailor. This back door. Dive into the water. The last one in is a dead duck. Senor Shannon, Senorita Duval, please come in. Amy, tell me what happened to your cheek, Senor. I will pay for the scar it leaves. We charge by the footage. Where's Amy? I will get her. Amy, Amy, darling, we have visitors. Senor Shannon, Senorita Duval. I heard Rico say he'd pay you for your scar slate. I want to contribute, too. You touch one inch of that scar, sis, and you'll have a few of your own. I just want to let you two know that I've got this thing wrapped up now. Take a look at this wet picture, Rico. Wet, because when we get a picture like this, we like to swim around with it. Especially when there's someone urging us onward with a rifle. Go on, take a look at it, Rico. Tweaking, isn't it, Rico? Look at it, Amy. I thought you were an Iowa three weeks ago. I told you I was. That means I was. But this picture... It was taken seven years ago, in Miami. Matt and I were on the debating society for our college. We went to Miami to debate. Who won, sis? Yeah, tell us about it. You are lying, Amy. This picture was taken recently. Here, see in the background. This year's model car. This could not be taken seven years ago. Recently, when you said you were with your mother, you were with Matt Jeffrey. So I went to Miami. So what if I did? So you killed Matt Jeffrey, poisoned him. That's so what if you did. I asked you to throw them out, Rico. Amy. Poisoned him at breakfast. He died on our boat. Matt Jeffrey, blackmailer number one. Murdered man number one. Amy killed someone else? All of you. Crazy. That little artist, Ray Norton, the man who got hold of one of these pictures. Blackmailer number two. Murdered man number two. Poor Amy. Poor, poor Amy. Because you wanted my wealth. You could have told me, Amy. Crazy. And the blackmail goes on. A hotel clerk who opened Matt's mail. He dreamed up a story, Amy. A good one. Told it to Rico. A story that made it look like the clerk murdered the other two. The clerk I was supposed to capture on the waterfront. Maybe killed. Truly, I am sorry, Amy. Amy, put down that gun. Get out of my way. I'll kill him. Amy, do not... <laughs> Rico. Rico, I didn't mean... It wasn't for you. I wanted... He got in the way, Rico. Rico, you can't die. You can't... The gun, Amy. <laughs> Murdered man number three. I was wrong. I didn't think she'd cry. Sir. Yeah, you were wrong. Now go home, sailor. I'll take it from here. <laughs> Isn't this wonderful, Slate? Sailing along, calm sea, beautiful day. Yeah, you better head back to Havana. It's going to rain. You're crazy. There's not a cloud in the sky. It's going to rain. Head back. What makes you think it's going to rain? My new scar, this one on my cheek, it twitches. When this scar acts up, it's going to rain. How can you tell that? You haven't had that scar long enough. Look, sailor, I got scars all over. One for snow, one for hail, one for hurricane, one for tornado, and one for cloudy. There's new ones for rain. It twitches, huh? Yeah. 
What does this do to it? Keep on doing that, sailor. I'm getting a message. Uh huh. Uh huh. Snow, rain, hail. Sailor, the bottom's gonna drop out of the barometer tonight. <laughs> And so, our two stars, Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall, have brought to a close our latest Bold Venture story. Special music was composed and conducted by David Rose. May we invite you to listen again next week at this time for another exciting adventure starring Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall together in Bold Venture. Bold Venture.